I'm Shivani Gupta. I'm obsessed with small to medium businesses growing. As business owners, we take so much risk and we want to make sure it's worth it. I believe one of the best presents you can give yourself as a business owner is to be able to learn how to scale your people, your profit and your processes. Welcome to Grow Your Business podcast. Today I'm going to speak about something that has been challenging for small to medium business owners for a long time. In fact, businesses in general. And that is how do we get our sales team to do more sales? Now, often our sales team in SMEs or small to medium businesses is not as big. Sometimes that person may be you as the owner or business leader, or you might have a smaller team. So it's so important to get more out of our sales team and making sure that they are exceeding their targets, ideally. So let me talk about some of the tips. Some of these you may be already doing really well and others you may not be. The first thing is to define really realistic targets, not just targets, realistic targets. So for example, if you did um, for whatever widgets that you sell, whether it's a product or service, let's say that last year you sold 56 of them, then the realistic target, unless there's a massive change in your environment and the economy and the industry that perhaps you're in, you know, would not be to put down 300 um, of those widgets for sailing. So you want to set some really realistic targets that motivate people that are a bit of a stretch for them, but also at the same time, it's realistic and they've got an opportunity to be able to meet, meet that. And you want to base that on your business size and obviously the market position and the growth objectives that you have. And you want to then be able to take these sales targets and break them down into manageable increments so that you can get that motivation and that momentum happening. So whether you break them down on a quarterly, monthly, even weekly basis, so that your KPIs and looking that on your dashboard, you can see where the sales are absolutely up to. The second thing that we want is in relation to getting our salespeople to do more sales, we want to make sure that your salespeople are really, really well trained. And part of that means that we focus on the key skills that they need. We look at the things that already are strengths in their personality and how they do different things. Um, but we also want to make sure that they have got the product knowledge or the service knowledge in terms of servicing the clients that you're trying to get them to do. We also want um, them to be able to leverage any cost-effective resources as part of that training. For example, there's some great tools now on online courses and workshops, um, even mentoring programs. If you don't have um, the expense to be able to go externally, then even look at budding up some more senior salespeople with some more junior salespeople because both can learn equally from each other in terms of how actually they can grab and um, continue to grow more sales. The, the third thing I want to talk about is incentive programs. It's so important, and of course you've got a budget to be able to meet, but make sure that the incentives that you've got in place are aligned to people's passions. So many times, um, small to medium business owners, as part of growing their business, create the, you know, we'll just do this standardised thing or a cash thing. Cash really motivates certain people, but it certainly doesn't motivate everyone. So it might be the same value, for example, if they grow and take your business from X um, to X plus 20% and they, you know, go by 20% and you've got a certain dollar amount. Let's say there's a $500 um incentive for being able to go up by 20%, then one of the things you want to do is that same $500 voucher, you might decide to buy somebody a reading voucher if they love books or a, um, a massage voucher if they love, um, you know, looking at their well-being, if they love eating out, get them a restaurant voucher. So it's not actually costing you any different, but it's more of a tailored incentive and have the incentive programs in there, discuss it with your sales team. So many times I come across people in small to medium businesses that actually don't even know what their um, sales incentives are and they, or they quite don't quite understand it. Not because they're not smart, but they just don't understand it. It's too complex. So make your incentive program really simple. Make sure people understand it. Make sure it's tailored for things that are really important to them. The other thing that you want to do is you want to be able to leverage really, really affordable tools. So, for example, having, um, you know, the way that you measure your sales, the way you record it, whatever CRM system that you have or contact management system that you have, you want to be able to look at your email tracking. You want to look at the things that are in your pipeline and you want to be able to do that. And there's so many great tools. I don't want to recommend one or two, but certainly if you've ever got any questions, please reach out on the contact form on ashshavani.com and I'd be able to send you some of them. Some of them are free. Some of them are very, very inexpensive. But you want to have a system to be able to measure and track 
the progress that your salespeople are having and then be able to leverage off that particular system as well. The next thing I'm going to talk about is you want to have people that have got cross-functional collaboration. What do I mean by that is, for example, you know, often what happens is operation and sales, um, there's that general friction that happens because operational people need to do the delivery and sometimes the sales people are doing great. Operational people go, oh, my goodness, why are they not selling enough or why are they selling so many? It's so hard for us to keep up with or we have excess uh, capacity and vice versa. Sales... Um, you know, people often don't get what operational people, they're like, well, I'm just here, you know, working so hard and, you know, there's no appreciation for it. So you want to make sure that the different departments, depending on how big your small to medium business is, um, you know, are really talking to each other. They're actually sharing what things are in the pipeline. They're actually also looking at what some of the insights are and how they could coordinate some of their efforts to make that a little bit easier. The next thing I want to talk about is how to leverage data. So, it's great. I always say that you can pump out a lot of data in your small to medium business, but you want to make sure that you've got the opportunity to convert that data into wisdom. And the only way that you can do that is to really start looking at your customer behaviors, really looking at what are the sales strategies that you need to refine? What offers do you need to have? The timing of your offers, depending on the industry and market that you're in. So you want to really look at that data and see when are you, when, when, which months do you have great sales? Which months don't you have great sales? The months that you don't have great sales, how can we incentivize certain things or put certain offers in that will help that grow, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to look at data in terms of understanding your sales, what happens, who's buying more, how do we incentivize them and, uh, and be able to make that happen. Um, one of the best things that I've seen is the one-on-one -on -one conversations that you have with your sales team. So it's so important to continue to give them um, incentives around and training around their goals, where they're struggling, what do they need? And these little meetings can be short 15-minute meetings. So I've had a number of variety of businesses over the last 20 years. And my key salespeople, I would often have a 10 to 15 minutes. 10 was probably the shortest where I'd say, hey, your sale numbers are this for this week. Where are you stuck? What are you struggling with? Sometimes it was confidence. Sometimes they were just stuck on a strategy where it had worked so far but no longer was working. Sometimes it was a new customer. And so just that one-on-one -on -one coaching will go a long way, whether it's you in the business or a senior person in your team that will provide some of those one-on-ones, build them in regularly. Um, for some of my businesses, when I did that weekly, and it was usually four or five key people, and then we cascaded that into the next level, it was amazing the impact that it had on the bottom line, which is what we want for from a growing your business perspective. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that it's so important to talk about this entrepreneurial or growth mindset. You know, you may have heard of Carol Dweck talking about uh, a fixed mindset where we believe that these are the certain outcomes that we're going to get and also this entrepreneurial growth mindset. What that means is that you want to give some initiative to some of your salespeople to come up with great ideas, to hear them out, listen to some of their sales approach, talk about the fact that they can share their ideas and insights into what they actually do. The second to last thing that I want to talk about is how to optimize some of your sales processes. One of the things that happens is really look at where they're spending a lot of tasks. Is there is there a lot of admin time being wasted uploading the data on that particular client? What are some of the things that we can do to in, you know, continue to improve our processes and making sure that those bottlenecks get taken away from our sales team so they can create more sales? And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is customer relationships. You know, building long-term relationships with people, not selling for the sake of selling, making sure that they really get the customer is really trying to help, really helps get repeat business. It really helps get loyalty. Even if that client doesn't buy, they will then recommend you across so many. So I hope these tips helped you. I look forward to you implementing them in your business. Thank you for always tuning in and would so appreciate it if you could take a moment to review and rate this podcast on Apple. Have a great day and keep growing your business. I'm Shivani Gupta and you've been listening to the Grow Your Business podcast. I hope you've got one idea that you can think about or perhaps even implement straight away in your business. Thank you for listening. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn under Ask Shivani. Remember, I call it Ask Shivani, so please send me your questions that I can address in this podcast for you. And I would also so appreciate if you went to the Apple Podcasts 
to rate and review this podcast. 